You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. Thank you for joining us here on News 25 and Ace Country Radio and streaming at kpvm.tv. And now on Roku, I'm David Preston on this Friday, March 29th. In our continuing coverage of Brandon Schneider, Brandon is sentenced in Robert Lane's district court over a number of charges. Rory Rossell covers this story. Earlier this month, Brandon Schneider appeared in court following three of his 27 open cases. During this hearing, Schneider appeared in front of the Honorable Judge Robert Lane. Schneider is a former MMA fighter, also known by the stage name The Brute, and he has many previous encounters with law enforcement. One of those cases he was in the courtroom for this month. And with MMA fighting comes multiple head injuries and head trauma. And there are things that impact your personality after you've been hit in the head one too many times. And I'm not saying Brandon didn't, he did a phenomenal job, but in training and fights, there's damages and injury that happen to the brain. And sadly, part of his journey through this life included he was injured, he had pain, and he turned to drugs to assist him. At first they were legal, at first they were prescription, and then it came to where the prescription drugs were not enough, and then he went to illegal drugs. Back in March of 2020, Schneider was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon and resisting a public officer. In 2020, deputies were dispatched to a report of a domestic, where the victim, Jamie Schneider, stated that Brandon Schneider came to her house and was very angry. He backed his vehicle up and advanced towards her at a high rate of speed while she was standing in her driveway. She then realized that he was not going to stop and started running away to avoid getting hit. Brandon then hit her fence and sped off after the incident. Jamie stated that he was also forcefully grabbing her hands and was intentionally trying to hit her. A voluntary witness who allegedly saw everything happen says that this statement is reportedly true. Once Brandon Schneider was located, he was immediately put under arrest. And then he allegedly became very upset and started yelling that he would rather deputies shoot him instead of taking him back to jail. During the hearing this month, Schneider's attorney, Kelly Blatnick, stood and spoke about Schneider's well-being and that at the correction center, Brandon had a mental evaluation completed that showed that Brandon was allegedly salvageable. Blatnick continues to discuss how there was a part of Schneider's life that was being controlled by drugs, allegedly because of the mother of his child not co-parenting with him. Following Blatnick speaking, she allowed Schneider to stand and add his comment. Schneider stood to say that he was really emotional and apologizes for his attitude. He also continued to say that he wanted to move forward with his life. Judge Lane then asks the state to speak. The district attorney begins to talk about how he believes Schneider should receive maximum time for his crimes and brings the victim to the stand to give her testimony. So I'm lucky to even be here after someone threatens your wife and says that they want to kill you and strangles you and puts their knee in their neck. And I'm lucky that I'm still here for my daughters. Um, it has been emotional. And being harassed by Brandon Schneider and followed everywhere I go, I have to have my mom or my dad or my sister or my brother-in-law or someone with me all the time when he was out because he would just show up wherever I was. and, and cause a scene, I could be at Walmart, there he is yelling at me in front of my girls and everyone's looking. Brandon Schneider was sentenced to 28 to 72 months in prison for case one of assault with a deadly weapon, 28 to 72 months in prison for domestic coercion, and 12 to 30 months for case three of possession of a firearm. A man enters a church building and sets off an explosive device that results in four people sustaining injuries. R.J. Camacho has the details. 
On March 28th, the Henderson Police Department was investigating the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints due to reports of an incendiary device being within the structure. According to investigators, a firework-type device had ignited within the church, resulting in four people suffering from minor injuries. The Henderson Police Department stated that the LVMPD and FBI were assisting with the investigation. According to a statement from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, during a youth activity, an unidentified individual entered the church building Building and through an incendiary device on the floor of the room where the activity was taking place. Currently, the investigation is ongoing, and News 25 will update you as the story develops. In other news, another man who was traveling at a high rate of speed is arrested after causing a crash that results in the death of another. A man in Vegas was arrested for allegedly driving three times over the posted speed limit, which caused a crash that critically injured his passenger and killed a 38-year-old man. This occurred on March 22nd, just after 3 a.m. near Las Vegas Boulevard and Walnut Road. According to investigators, a maroon 2017 Dodge Challenger was speeding south on Las Vegas Boulevard before crashing into a red 2014 Hyundai. Accent. The force of the impact was strong enough to split the Hyundai in two, which killed the driver, a 38-year-old man identified as Luciano Chavez. The passenger of the Dodge, who was a 29-year-old man, had to be mechanically extricated and was transported to UMC, where it was discovered that he had sustained substantial damage to his lower extremities, which included a broken femur. The driver of the Dodge, which is accused of speeding and causing the crash, was identified as Charlie Hernandez, who is 28 years old. According to reports, he initially told authorities that he was driving his passenger home because he had too much to drink. However, a field sobriety test was conducted on Hernandez, to which he was reported to have failed. Hernandez did not sustain any injuries from the crash, but he was still transported to UMC to be medically screened. Afterwards, he was placed into custody under the charges of DUI resulting in death, DUI resulting in substantial bodily harm, and reckless driving. Our Las Vegas roving correspondence has hit the streets once again and brings us the latest original content out of Nevada's big city. The American dream is defined as the ideal that every U.S. citizen should have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. I spoke to local businessman Fan Chow about his international experiences and why he believes we are so fortunate to live in a democracy. Vote is a privilege. Vote is a, not a right as much as a privilege, not that it's not a right under the U.S. Constitution, but certain guidelines for a country need to be observed to preserve the, co the country's integrity. And that's part of legal voting, right? Now, there are some rumors and talks about Democrat having his migrant in here and they allowed them to vote. Like New York City planned to have the 800 migrants to allow them to vote. Based on what? We could not do that in any other 200 some country around the world. Why would we do that to ourselves? By doing that, it's not about freedom, it's about the integrity of your country. The international businessman is very active in the local political arena here in Las Vegas after living around the world. What really got me back into uh, the politics is to, to all my international travel. I got a chance to feel and see what other people in other part of the world see us. And then I realized how much we are behind compared by everybody else. So the recent time I got in politics is I want to see the country will be better, see the change, because we're no longer competing with ourselves, we're competing with the world, and the world moving a lot faster than we are right now. So part of the politics agenda is not just about getting the politics, but it's just to improve our country, our community, so we have a better future, because everybody is fighting for the future, but if you don't have the good foundation, you're probably not going to get there. A true American success story, the proud immigrant encourages all Nevadans to get out and become part of the electoral process. America has a one thing that no other country will give you. You have unlimited amount of opportunity. You just got to find time and find the energy to go look for it. Nothing's, no one's going to give it to you. It's not here, not anywhere else. So, if, uh, like they say, no such thing as free lunch. Someone's paying for that lunch. You, it might be free to you, but someone's paying for that lunch. So, we just have to keep our head down, uh, learn around what's around us, uh, protect the integrity of this country, then, then I think we have a better future. Reporting right here from Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Maria Centers with Southern Nevada News Network. 
Additional voting information can be found at vote411.org. We'll be back on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by Tower Pizza. Voted best pizza in Pahrump 2023. Give them a call at 775-537-2211. 775-537-2211. Or visit the website www.towerpizzanv.com. Welcome back to News 25. The 11th annual Chili Cook-Off took place this past weekend at Petrick Park. This fun-filled festival has something for everyone. For more on this event, we go to Samantha Roberts, who gives us all the details. On Friday, March 22nd through Sunday the 24th, the 11th annual Chili Cook-Off took place at Petrick Park, attracting hundreds of attendees all excited to enjoy the wonderful culinary and entertainment experiences it offered. The highlights of the festival were the two officially sanctioned chili competitions, which took place on Saturday and Sunday. Attendees were able to sample the numerous varieties of chili that were prepared by the contestants. According to the event coordinator Kelly Slater, everything went amazingly. This was by far the best cook-off to date and the most attendance. Beyond the chili competition, there was also a car show, a carnival, live music, vendors, games, raffles, and so much more. One of the attractions was the Pepper Mini Grand Prix, an electric car race for the kids hosted by Oliver Jones. The event raised a total of $8,000, with $1,000 going to St. Jude's Children's Ranch and the remaining $7,000 going to the Nye County Cinderella Girls Program. This wonderful event was geared more towards children so that they may want to get involved and compete for years to come, maintaining the time-honored tradition of the chili cook-off for generations of the future here in Pahrump. Senator Jackie Rosen recently held a roundtable discussion regarding the fentanyl crisis with law enforcement in Reno and the head of Wake Up Nevada. R.J. Camacho has this story. U.S. Senator Jackie Rosen held a roundtable discussion in order to discuss the fentanyl crisis with Reno Police Chief Catherine Nance, Reno Fire Chief David Cochran, and Darcy Patterson, who is a local advocate and mother who lost her daughter to an opioid overdose. Just last week, Senator Rosen's bipartisan legislation known as the End Fentanyl Act was signed into law, which should help crack down on drug smuggling by requiring the Commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection to update their drug interdiction guidance once every three years at the least. Catherine Nance, who is the chief of the Reno Police Department, went on to state that, with the rise of fentanyl-related deaths and overdoses in our community, we are appreciative of the ongoing efforts to help combat the significant problem we face. She went on to thank Senator Rosen for, quote, leading the charge to make us all safer. Darcy Patterson, the local advocate and founder of Wake Up Nevada, spoke on the subject as well, stating that, every day in Nevada there are two deaths related to overdose. This may be substance users and first-time consumers. Fentanyl has changed the landscape of how and why we protect our communities from these deaths and the collateral damage this has incurred. Here's Mikey with your look at sports. Time now for your News 25 look at sports and streaming at www.kpvm.tv and now on Roku. Ah, opening day, baseball is back, hope is in the air. You can almost smell the hope over the hot dogs or the new hot dog seltzer from 7-Eleven. No seriously, that's a thing. Hope that your favorite team will have a great season. Hope that the warmer temperatures are here to stay and the hope and the magic of kids being kids and enjoying America's pastime 
Las Vegas Aviators open their 2024 season against the Reno Aces tonight. Opening day wasn't all magic. In a protest of the Oakland A's plan to move to Las Vegas in 2028, fan groups staged a boycott of the home opener Thursday, purchasing tickets to the game to organize a block party outside the stadium. Paid attendance for the game was 13,522, but many never made it inside. The fans missed the Cleveland Guardians beating the A's 8 to nothing. The Oakland A's are given back to their soon-to-be new home. The team donated over $200,000 to over 70 leagues across Nevada to support Diamond Recreational Youth Sports. Logan Thompson made 39 saves as the Golden Knights beat the Winnipeg Jets 4-1 to last night. They're off to Minnesota to play the Wild tomorrow afternoon. And the Prim Valley Trojanettes dance tryouts. I think I'm in, right? No, that's happening April 23rd. The day before will be a clinic. For more information, contact Coach Cunningham at jcunningham at nyschools.org. And that's your look at sports on News 25. Deanna Lewis from Pets Are Worth Saving tells us about a cute, energetic dog named Nike looking for a forever home. Here we have Nike. He's almost a year old. He came to us as a litter. Nike is very affectionate. He's kind of iffy around cats. He does amazing with children. He does really good with other animals, other dogs. Uh, Nike loves to play ball. He loves tug of war. Nike is up to date on all of his shots. He is neutered. If you would like to set up a meet with Nike, our phone number is 775-253-5051. Our address is 520 East Street, Suite C. Uh, you can also visit us at our website, nevadapause.com, or visit us on Facebook at Nevada Paws Group. We have your classic country breakfast after the break. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. The Welcome to Las Vegas sign is changing colors to blue on April 2nd in recognition of autism awareness. The Welcome to Las Vegas sign is changing colors to blue on Tuesday, April 2nd, in recognition of World Autism Day and Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month. Two-thirds of children with autism have been bullied, according to experts. And raising awareness can help bring acceptance and combat the bullying of those with autism. Brian Hager, who is the president and CEO of Grant a Gift Autism Foundation, spoke on the matter, stating that, Let us all embrace the spectrum of our community. For every individual with autism spectrum disorder is a kaleidoscope of uniqueness. Let understanding be our guide and acceptance our beacon, not just today, but every day. Grant a Gift Foundation is the only multidisciplinary center of its kind in the state of Nevada, and offers diagnoses, therapy, social and or family programming, vocational training, and more. The center serves over 5,000 children. Here's Mikey once again to tell us what's cooking on Classic Country Breakfast this Sunday morning. Howdy. On the menu this week on Classic Country Breakfast, born on March 28th, Country music artist and actress who has scored 35 number one singles and released over 25 albums, sometimes referred to as the Queen of Country, Reba McIntyre. In the Not an Oldie But a Goodie segment, we'll hear a new song by the Sentimental Family Band and a new song by Melissa Carper. And we'll hear a new song off the new Beyonce album called Cowboy Carter. And my special guest, Ranger Doug from the band Riders in the Sky, calls the show to talk about the Grand Ole Opry, his collection of sweet guitars, and being featured on Disney soundtracks. Well, I mean, what can you say? Uh, obviously, it was wonderful. They, uh, they were good to us, and uh, it's been a great, uh, a great team. We, we did uh, 
did the two albums that won Grammys, and we appeared in Toy Story 2 and in For the Birds, that short uh, that came on before Monsters Incorporated, and did a couple other little projects for them, a thing called Stanley Rides Again, which was like for preschoolers. Classic Country Breakfast, this Sunday morning at 8 on Ace Country Radio and streaming at www.kpvm.tv, channel 25.8. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Taking a look outside through our Learner and Row Weather Cam, it's cloudy and cold with some rain in the forecast. Mikey Ruhan tells us what's in store for the week coming up next. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. I'm Mike Ruhan from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming at www.kpvm.tv and now on Roku. Fernley 50 degrees, Fallon saw 52, Carson City cool at 45, Tonopah 52, Goldfield saw 53 degrees, Beatty 64, Amargosa and Vegas 70. Out in Death Valley looks like summertime at 81 degrees, but here in the paradise of Pahrump, our current temperature is 65 degrees. We hit 67 just a little bit earlier. Winds out of the south at 17 miles per hour, humidity 19%. Sun rose this morning at 6.33. It's going to set this evening at 7.03. Look for it to go away under mostly cloudy skies. We're going down to a low of 47 degrees. Humidity up to 44%. Smells like rain. And it is rain. We got a 95% chance of rain tomorrow. The temperature goes down to 51. Easter Sunday, not too much better. 57 degrees. Monday, though, we rebound. 65. Tuesday, look at that. 72. And Wednesday, that's the day I recommend you call in sick from work. But check out the wind again on Thursday. No, thank you. It's so windy around here. Back to the desk. Here's David. Thank you, Mikey. The Prompt Holiday Task Force is holding their free Easter picnic on Saturday at 10 a.m. And we'll wrap up about 2, so don't forget about that and hopefully it will stay dry long enough for you to have fun. I'm David Preston. Have a great Easter weekend.